So what is a full stack web developer? How many coding languages does a full stack web developer actually know? And is it possible to become a full stack web developer in just one year? In this video, I'm going to touch on those topics. Hi, I'm Joe Rivera, founder of PixelMub.com and creator of DevWP, which is a WordPress training theme that I'm using to help people learn how to code for WordPress. Now let's talk about what is a full stack web developer. Well, this is someone who knows the various coding languages for the front end design and development of a website, along with the back end coding languages, and knows how to manage and maintain a Linux server. So in essence, it's someone that handles every aspect of a website from the front end, back end, and the server side. On top of that, they also know how to work with a database management system, typically MySQL, and I'll touch on that in a second. And the more advanced full stack web developers know how to work with version control systems like Git and task runners like Gulp or Grunt or Webpack. So now what are all the coding languages that a full stack actually knows? Well, typically in the stack that I work with would be HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, PHP, MySQL, Linux Server Administration, and Git for version control, and Gulp as the task runner. So what is HTML? Well, we're going to start off here because this is the skeleton of every single website online. This creates the structure of a website, and typically if you look at the source code, it'll include the HTML tag, the head tag, the body tag, you might have some section tags, div tags, the sides, footers, headers, H1s, H2s, H3s, 4s, 5s, some paragraphs, unordered lists, ordered lists, and other types of HTML tags. It's a lot to cover. From there, you move on to CSS, which is the cascading style sheets. And this is what actually helps to make a website look good, hopefully. So now we're talking about the layout of a website. We're talking about the responsiveness of it in terms of responsive design, the color schemes, the font choices, and things of that nature. There's a lot that goes into it, but think about it like this. If HTML is the skeleton of a website, CSS is the skin of the website itself. From there, you move on to JavaScript. Now, this is when it starts getting a little bit more complicated. JavaScript and jQuery, which is the library for JavaScript, adds more interactive features like hover effects, sliders, things of that nature. But now all this covers the front end of a website, the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and the library of jQuery. If you know this aspect of it, then you're a front end designer or developer. Then you move on to the back end. And here we're going to start talking about some dynamic coding languages like PHP or Python, or you could even use Node.js as well. But what this does, it's code that's sitting in a web server located in a data center. So when a person visits a website, they're going to see the actual website itself. And if they view page source, they'll see the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They'll have access to that but they won't have access to the server-side code, which means your code on the server is more secure. And this is what's used to dynamically generate any output of HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, depending on what page or what view the person's looking at the website. And now PHP and MySQL work hand in hand. MySQL is the database. Think about it like Excel, but just a whole lot more robust. And PHP works with MySQL in order to generate the content needed to deliver to the end user. Now, what type of operating system does a typical website use? The vast majority of websites use Linux operating systems. And you're going to find that the typical distribution of Linux used is going to be either Ubuntu or CentOS. So a full stack web developer is going to know how to work with those versions of Linux along with the other coding languages as well. Now, the more advanced full stacks will also work with version control. The one I like to work with is called Git. Now, this makes your whole entire workflow seamless. Now, Git is by far one of the most popular version control systems, and Git is going to definitely be part of the tool set that a full stack web developer uses. This is a very large topic, and I actually have a video that goes more into Git and how you could use it in order to do your web design and development. I'll leave it up in the cards or in the description area down below. And then beyond that, you have Gulp, which is the task runner, or you could choose to work with Grunt or Webpack. Now, what does this do? This helps to automate a lot of the lower level processes that you just don't want to have to deal with. Maybe they take up too much time, like the minification of your code, the processing of your code, compiling of your code. And maybe that sounds like a foreign language, but later on in the process of learning how to become a full stack, it's something you will come across. So now, is it possible to become a full stack web developer in just one year? I mean, seriously, that's a lot of coding languages and technologies that you have to learn. So let's break it down. 
First, you have to realize in order to become a master at anything, it's going to take a considerable amount of time. In no way, shape or form am I saying that you could become a master web developer in just one year, but you could definitely learn the fundamentals of being a full stack web designer and developer. What it does take is making sure you dedicate the amount of time necessary in order to learn. So how much time are we talking about? Well, in order to learn HTML, that's where you should definitely start off. If you dedicate two to three hours per day for one month, just focus on HTML, you'll definitely be on your way. And then after learning HTML or at least the fundamentals of it, you move on to CSS. And this will take you another month or two in order to learn the basics and the fundamentals of how to incorporate CSS with HTML. So now we're at three months in total. From there, we'll move on to JavaScript and jQuery. And again, this will get more complicated, especially as we move further down the line of becoming a full stack. But here, you will definitely need to dedicate around two to three months in order to learn JavaScript and jQuery. Now again, you won't be a master of JavaScript or jQuery, but you can learn the fundamentals in two to three months. And once you finish this part of it, you know the fundamentals of front-end web design and development. That encompasses HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and jQuery. And all this takes about six months. Now we move on to the server-side coding language and database that you're going to be using. In my case, I use PHP. Others use Python. Some use Node.js. And there's a whole bunch of other options out there. For the database, you have MySQL, you have MariaDB, you have MongoDB, and a bunch of others as well. But you'll typically work with a server-side coding language like PHP. This will handle all the dynamic functionality and processing of any request being made. And the database, like MySQL, will have all the information that will be stored, like say a user's information, any dynamically generated content that will be delivered to the web browser, and any data that that website might need, like say it's a real estate website, what homes are for sale, how many bedrooms does it have, how many bathrooms does it have, things of that nature. That's what you would find in a database. So the learning of a coding language like PHP or Python and a database management system like MySQL will typically be about three months. So now we have about nine months under our belt in terms of learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, PHP and MySQL. So what do we do with the final three months? Well, this is when we're going to start learning how to work with Linux. Again, it's going to be either Ubuntu or CentOS. And you can learn the general fundamentals within about a month. So now we're at 10 months. At that point, what I suggest you also do is you may want to consider learning version control like Git and a task runner like Gulp in order to automate a lot of your workflow. This will definitely be vital to your whole entire career as a full stack web developer. By learning Git and Gulp, you'll definitely be improving your workflow and you'll be saving yourself a significant amount of time in the long run. So the combination of learning Linux, Git and Gulp can take a total of about two months. And at this point, we have 11 months done. Now, for the last month, you put everything together, you test everything out, and you make sure that everything's secure, optimized, efficient, and performs well. Now, how do you learn all this stuff? Well, you do it locally on your computer. What I recommend is getting a local web server like MAMP or Local by Flywheel. You could work with any computer you have. It could be a Windows computer, Mac OS, or a Linux-based computer. As I mentioned at the beginning, you're going to want to dedicate two to three hours per day in order to effectively give yourself enough time. If you can, definitely try to give yourself more. If you want to become a full stack web developer, and if you want to do it as fast as possible, you're going to have to create your own bootcamp. Well, what is that? Well, a coding bootcamp is where you go to a location where there's a bunch of students learning how to code. Typically, a coding bootcamp could be about three to six months long, and they dedicate the entire day to learning how to code. So now you're in an environment where there's other students and an instructor teaching you how to become a coder, working about eight hours per day. That's why typically after a coding bootcamp, you're able to find a job, you know, in an entry level position as a web developer. Now, boot camps are great, but they do cost a significant amount of money. So how can you emulate that type of situation in your home environment? Well, again, you're going to have to dedicate serious time to learning how to code. You're going to want to get all the books. You're going to want to YouTube it, find the documentation pages of all the different uh, coding languages, and take some online courses. Don't treat it like a hobby. Treat it like something that you're seriously going to tackle on a day-to-day -day basis. No days off three hours a day if possible, more if you can. Break down those hours throughout the day, maybe an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon, and another hour towards the evening. Now you might be scratching your head saying, seriously, I don't have 
three hours a day to learn how to do this. And that's when your time management comes into play. How focused are you? How disciplined are you? Are you able to turn off the TV, silence your cell phone, and eliminate any distractions for specific periods of time? If not, find another location where you can go to in order to practice and study. But if it's something you really want to achieve, then just do it. Now remember what I said. After one year of learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, PHP, MySQL, Linux Server Administration, Git, and Go, you won't be a master, but you'll be well on your way to becoming a full stack web developer. All right, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification icon, and if you have any comments or ideas, leave them down below. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.